uh, Jonathan Ott, who's uh, our good friend and uh, friend of Albert Hoffman, and uh, was responsible for translating uh, LSD, My Problem Child, and uh, numerous other uh, collaborative works, and uh, his own uh, extensive uh, books. We had to get Jonathan in here. Reb Zalman, Shakhtar Shalomi, uh, in the 60s uh, experienced LSD, and in the wake of uh, his mystical experiences, uh, founded the Jewish Renewal Movement. Um, Bach Ellis uh, hit a, a, a no, pitched a no-hitter. He was a Pittsburgh Pirates uh, uh, baseball player and pitched a no-hitter while on LSD. No one was able to get a hit that day off of Doc, uh, and he said uh, that there were comet trails off of every ball. He later became a, a drug counselor and uh, revealed this in a 1984 uh, biography. Uh, Francis Crick um, was known to experiment with LSD back in the 50s and uh, he credits his imagining of the uh, double helix to his use of LSD. And uh, some of this uh, writing is from a, um, a story that I, most of you may have read already, but it was uh, published just last year uh, um, regarding this discovery. Uh, Carrie Mullis, who's uh, uh, quite an amazing character, and uh, also won a Nobel Prize, as did Crick, uh, for his uh, discovery of PCR, which is a, a method for detecting uh, DNA. And uh, he described his uh, visions as being able to ride on a DNA molecule. And to uh, really, from that perspective, uh, begin to understand uh, the mechanics of it and design his uh, sort of uh, invention based on those visions. Of course, our beloved Anne and Sasha Shulgin, a uh, great genius who's introduced hundreds of new um, psychedelic compounds, and Anne, who, who uh, psychotherapeutically has uh, helped uh, hundreds, possibly thousands of people uh, through Anne. sessions. On the other side of the painting, this, uh, the, the sort of scientific and some of the other personalities that we just saw are kind of on the right side of the painting. On the left side of the painting are artistic personalities. Um, I think that the impact of LSD can hardly be um, uh, <laughs> its importance uh, cannot be overestimated. Um, for, uh, for each of these artists, um, they, were, they were already great, but LSD catalyzed um, their creative process and opened them to uh, new realms that empowered their work with uh, extraordinary impact for the audience. Uh, Jimi Hendrix uh, spoke of these large gatherings, these outdoor festivals, as creating a sky church. He was all about the, um, the sacred um, reality that was revealed through the psychedelics. Of course, the uh, Grateful Dead um, created a, a whole new approach to music and the kind of collective that gathered around uh, the Grateful Dead um, is an extraordinary and unprecedented kind of uh, relationship to music. Um, Bob Dylan, who's kind of uh, hidden but visible because of this Milton Glaser poster, there you can sort of detect where he's at. Um, nuzzling uh, Hendrix, I guess. Obviously already a genius, but the, um, his use of uh, both marijuana, uh, which is legendary, and uh, LSD, 
um, helped to catalyze a new approach to uh, his music. I think it also points to the underlying spiritual search that runs through uh, this great poet's uh, body of work. Somebody told me that Sartre had a bad mescaline trip and uh, that uh, existentialism may have been based on that. Uh, he and Simone uh, de Beauvoir evidently uh, continued their psychedelic uh, experiments together. Supposedly, the uh, play No Exit uh, was based on one of these mescaline uh, journeys. Uh, the Beatles. Um, George Harrison is very outspoken in mentioning the importance of LSD for the Beatles and for himself personally. It was like opening a door before you even knew there was a door there. Uh, he said there was an overwhelming feeling of well-being that there was a God and that uh, he could see him in every blade of grass. And uh, also, he says, it changed me and there was no way back. And I think that those are great statements because it essentializes what happens uh, to all of us in a, if we have a kind of breakthrough mystical experience while we uh, uh, use psychedelics. And uh, then Lenin, uh, God isn't in a pill, but LSD explained the mystery of life. It was a religious experience. There was a whole... Uh, kind of graphics that were based on uh, Peter Max's kind of uh, cartoon. And uh, I just thought it was interesting that even Paul McCartney uh, was quoted as uh, being deeply committed to the possibilities of LSD as a universal cure-all. It's really hard for me to imagine life without these great artists and what my, uh, how my soul would have fared over uh, my lifetime without the intervention of the, the beauty that these artists, these musicians have brought. Uh, Allen Ginsberg, he was one of those uh, folks that got, uh, was on campus um, and got to experience LSD before it became demonized uh, in a legal study that uh, Gregory Bates him Bateson encouraged him uh, in uh, 1959. I believe a year or two later, he worked with uh, Timothy Leary and uh, experienced psilocybin. Truly an inheritor of uh, William Blake's visionary approach to poetry. R. Crumb and uh, his confessed use of uh, LSD. And uh, he's echoing what George Harrison said, I'll never be the same. Uh, Anais Nin also wrote of her um, experiences with LSD. She described the state of uh, synesthesia and uh, the music vibrated through my body as if I were one of the instruments and I felt myself becoming a full percussion orchestra, becoming green, blue, and orange. The waves of the sounds ran through my hair like a caress. Another one that I con contemplated bringing into the painting, and there's so many of them, uh, Oscar Janiger, uh, the uh, uh, the Mary Pranksters, Ken Kesey, all of these uh, personalities could have uh, easily gone into the painting, but I ran out of room. In uh, the public media in 1959, and when I was first introduced to LSD back when I was 12 years old, was very positive about the uh, possibilities and the therapeutic uses of uh, LSD. And then we have, I guess, some of the reasons for its demonization, I guess. Um, was uh, Charles Manson, who, uh, w along with his family, uh, did LSD experiments, and some of which I'm sure were very positive, but uh, then there was also a kind of um, uh, sociopathic um, uh, need to uh, begin a race war that uh, Charlie uh, felt was imminent. Uh, in some of the earlier lectures, it's all about intention and what we bring to uh, our use, the set and setting uh, of uh, the use of the LSD, which will uh, bring out uh, whatever is there. Uh, Groff calls it the non-specific amplifier of our mental states. The use uh, by the CIA in some of those experiments uh, you could only classify as evil.
And so we put the uh, uh, Richard Nixon and J. Edgar Hoover downwind. Um, and uh, William Burroughs uh, wrote eloquently also of the potential misuses of uh, psychedelics, the vulnerability of the psyche in that state. I wanted to not simply keep the painting focused on the 60s, but uh, wanted a little bit of updating, so um, have gone to Simon Posford and Raja Ram's uh, Spangl. Truly, I think some of the trippiest music ever composed. Uh, if you haven't heard Spangl, I think you'll love it. Oh, yes, Spangl. All right. Keith Haring uh, credits his invention of his style to uh, the use of LSD when he was 15 uh, back in the uh, woods in Cootstown, Pennsylvania, where he grew up. And uh, he's an artist that's celebrated all over the world. A friend of his said uh, he never knew him to paint without getting stoned first. For those uh, who paint in that state of consciousness, there is a um, access to the flow of the unconscious that is quite evident in Keith's work. This is as close as I come to self-reference in the painting, which is uh, the tool I that I designed for uh, the rock group tool. and. Uh, so it's there also in the painting. Um, for those of you who don't know Tool, industrial strength psychedelia, um, and uh, they like to reference uh, Timothy Leary and uh, Bill Hicks uh, has a really eloquent kind of um, portion in one of the that's sampled in one of the uh, Tool songs. Of course, uh, Burning Man, the uh, quintessential psychedelic gathering, probably the freest and most creative outpouring of artistic souls that uh, happens on the planet. And uh, this is the little uh, corner when I signed the painting that just says happy birthday uh, to Dr. Hoffman.